Yes, St. Timothy's Church. We'll be waiting. The car is on the way. I'm going with Coop. Are you sure? Yeah. You'll have Bobby. You don't need me. Do you need help? Beautiful. Yeah, well, don't bother searching the recesses of your mind trying to remember where you've seen it before. You haven't. It was Georgie's. I can, I can put this up later. No. Oh, well, it's okay. Gone. George is dead because I failed her. You know me, I'm not exactly your garden variety family man. Agreed. I mean, family's not a dirty word or anything. It's just that, uh, well, I don't go for that ties that bind thing. Where are you going with this? My daughter was here. Flashing those beautiful eyes of hers. And I saw my whole history. I saw those same eyes looking at me when she was a baby. Saw her brother, her mother, everyone I ever cared about. I saw you, wife. Standing here day after day, willing me to live when I was half gone, ready to cash in. And I thought, no, I can't do this to these people. This is my family. I ain't gonna bail on them. If I ever forget to be grateful to Lulu, please remind me. By the way, you won't regret it. I promise. I'll hold you to that. Time. <laughs> oh, young Spielberg. How are you? It's a pleasure to see you. Sorry about the circumstances. Oh, it's, it's okay. I'm, I'm all right, I think. I mean, I'm, I seem to be getting to where I'm supposed to be. Don't know how. It's enough. How are you? Peachy. Your mother assures me that I'm going to be up and running on all cylinders soon. You are? Hey, congratulations, son. Boy, my hat's off to you. You always knew what you wanted, and you went right out there and got it. I'm proud of you. <sighs> Thank you. Oh, well, at least you're not alone. No, Cupcake, I am not alone. I'm the police commissioner. I should have caught this bastard a long time ago. Instead, he's been free to roam, wreaking havoc. One of my daughters was attacked in my own living room. And now George is dead. Okay. You have to listen to me. You didn't let Georgie down once. You were the one constant in her life. And Maxie's, and mine. You were the one who committed to raising us when our parents couldn't or wouldn't. You were there, telling us to eat broccoli and do our homework. 
dealing with our raging female hormones, making us know every single day that we were just as loved as any kid in any normal family. Think of the person Georgie was. Smart, compassionate, loving. That didn't just happen. She was a reflection of the best of you, Uncle Mac. You cannot control what's random. And believe me, you are the best parent any of us could have asked for. You got through to him. Thank you. <laughs> no backing out, right? Not a chance, sweetheart. Yes, we should, we should go. Would you give my condolences, please, to Mac and Maxie? You're coming with us, right? No, no, I'm going to stay here. Dr. Julian's coming in. Well, if Dr. Julian shows up, tell him to come back in an hour. There, problem solved. I have no place at that funeral. They wouldn't expect me to be there. I would. I'm not kidding, Mom. You... You were awful to Georgie. I mean, you, you didn't get to know her. You just judged her. The least you can do is spend an hour pay your respect. Tracy, I won't let Julian say a word until you get back. Go. Give your son what he needs. Oh. You have really been missed. And I'm just sorry that uh, your homecoming was due to such tragic circumstances. Thank you. Sorry about him, honey. It's another senseless tragedy. We're going to find who did this. I promise you that. Well, I hope so. But in the meantime, today is about Georgie and what an extraordinary little girl she was. You know what Mr. Q really means is Georgie had no problem giving him an earful whenever he butted his nose too far into her business. If you're talking about my resentment at her marriage to Dylan, yes, I resented it because they were both too young. I, I understand. I chased Dylan off a few times myself. Good. We'll, we'll see you. That well, speaks to his character. I don't know many teenage boys that were hang around if they knew that they were under the... Uh, Police Commission is right out. I'm really sorry, Mike. Thank you. If there's anything at all that we can do, please don't hesitate. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Sorry. I'm devastated over your loss. Georgie was my dearest friend. And I'll miss her every day. Sorry, Commissioner. Me too, Miss Jones. Back. You know, there was uh, <clears throat> quite an outpouring at Kelly's this morning. People kept coming by and, and telling stories about Georgie. You know, mm -hmm. How she she went to check on a an elderly customer one day because that customer didn't show up for lunch. Now, when business was slow at Kelly's and, and the tips were, were slim, she'd go to all the waitresses and ask them if they needed extra cash. Mm -hmm. and dozens of people told me how she knew all their names. Your daughter touched a lot of lives just because of who she was. And I wanted you to know. <laughs> Thank you for picking me up. I don't think I could sit in the car with my mother the whole way there, especially when I have to get up. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Everyone at the hospital is thinking about you. You've got lots of friends to lean on. 
I know. Thank you. I need to go over a few details with you before we begin the service. Sure. Thanks for being here. She should be here by now. She's having a hard time. Not that she opened up to me or anything, but she's really furious. I warned you. I guess I just never comprehended the depth of her anger. I probably should have. I, I probably just should have a lot of things. I'm so sorry, Mac. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Don't beat yourself up. Now is not the time. Okay, Georgie wouldn't want that. Where you've been? I've been worried about you. We ran into traffic. Thank you for the ride. Yeah, I'm glad to help. Let me know if you need anything else, okay? Make right, sure. Uh, everyone's here. As soon as the family is seated, we'll start. Oh, thank you. Well, this is it. At this time, Maxie Jones wishes to say a few words about her sister. I look at all your faces and I see the story of my sister's life. The people, the incidents, shaped Georgie into the incredible person that she was. My sister was relentlessly positive, annoyingly so at times, or maybe that was just me. I'm the reason the phrase black sheep was invented, but we all know that. It's just Georgie and I were so different. It was hard for me to believe that I wasn't adopted. But the truth is, we both were. By an incredible guy who had no idea what he was signing up for. Nothing in Mac's life prepared him for fatherhood, but he hung steady. And I'm speaking for Georgie when I say you made her feel special every day. You were so confident in her, it was impossible for her to not feel confident in herself. You were the greatest gift in Georgie's life. <sighs> Dylan, I know I was never really nice to you, but I am indebted to you. Because you showed my sister true romantic love, and that is something that we all hope for, but some of us can never find. And Georgie held you in her heart until the day that she died. Bobby, Georgie loved you. Not just as a surrogate mom, but as a friend and a confidant. And you always stepped up when she needed you. Thank you for loving her with such an open heart. Robin, 
You were always the sister that I could never get it together enough to be. Georgie knew that she could count on you. You're always there just to talk to her, laugh with her, or just give her really good advice. <laughs> you graced her life, and I'm grateful she had you. And Spinelli, Jordy had a lot of friends, but you were the best. Once she met you, she never felt alone because she knew you were there for her whenever she needed, day or night. And I know I was never really nice to you either, but I'm really glad that my sister found a friend who understood her. There's one more person that I would like to single out because above anyone else, she deserves special attention. Our mother. What can I say about our mother? Let me think. Hmm. Well, not much, I guess, since she dumped us on Mac a few years back and never looked back. <laughs> My mother is a Florence Nightingale. She ran off to take care of our ailing great-grandmother. There's nothing wrong with that, except it was just an excuse, because the truth is, my mom got bored with her family life a long time before she got on that plane to Texas. Probably started those nights she ran off to play Mystery Solving Adventure Girl. We all knew it wouldn't be long before she wanted to take on that role permanently. She just needed to figure out a way to get rid of her inconvenient children. Maxie, stop. Don't do this. To me, getting dumped wasn't the worst part. It was the way she forced my sister to be okay with the abandonment to make herself feel better. Keep believing she was progressive and unconventional instead of just a selfish bitch who didn't want anything to do with her own children. Please, Maxie, that's enough. You're not honoring your sister by humiliating her mother. Being abandoned by her mother was a fact of my sister's life, and I think it needs to be addressed. And all of you could tiptoe around my mom and act like it's wonderful that she's here, but where the hell was she when it really mattered? Felicia Jones decided a long time ago she didn't want to be a mom anymore. And you don't get to sail into my sister's funeral pretending that you are one. You have no right to be here. So either you leave, or I will. 